everybody let's try this space truss problem so we have roller supports at b and c and d and then there's a load over here 800 pounds i'm trying to find the axial forces in a b a c and a d okay so this is basically the method of joints where we're looking at the one joint but then a good place to start is you don't have to start here but an option is you just draw the free body diagram of the entire structure. So the entire structure, and then there are supports at B, C, and D. Okay, so those are roller supports. So it, it can only provide a reaction normal to the surface, normal to the ground. And then there's that 800 pound load right over here. Okay, so we can some forces in X, some forces in Y, some forces in Z, some torque about wherever we want. Okay, so in the X direction, oh, we got nothing. Okay, so that's not useful. In the y direction, b plus c plus d minus 800 pounds. All right in the z direction, uh, nothing's happening, so that's also not useful. And then let's sum torque about wherever we want. So somewhere convenient, maybe the origin at point b. So about the origin at point b. Uh, let me go where I have a little bit more space. Okay, some torque about point B. Okay, so then there's torque from this force C. So then that's R from B to C cross that, this reaction force C. I'll just make these vectors. Okay. All right, so that's the torque about the origin from reaction C. Plus the torque due to D, so that's R from B to D cross that reaction force at D. And then there's a torque from the load, so R from B to A cross the load. I'll just call it F load, which is negative 800 pounds in the J direction. All right, so some torque equals zero. Okay, so let's uh, let's write this out. So let me write, I'll put the numbers. Okay, so from B to C, so our, this one right here, right? So from B to C is five, zero, six. And then C is some unknown value in the J direction, like this. Okay, and then now let's do over here. So from B to D is, six zero zero and then uh, the reaction at d is in the y direction like this okay and now this one so from b to a is four three four and then it's 800 pounds in the negative j direction so minus 800 okay and this equals zero so, right, so just, okay, I'll just do a little bit more. So right here, I direction, negative 6C, I, J direction, 0, K direction, 5C. Okay, now this one, I direction, 0, J direction, 0, K direction, 6D. Okay, now this one, I direction, negative 4 times negative 800, so that's plus. Okay, and then uh, let me check the units. Feet and pounds. Okay, and then, okay, that, that's, I did this one right here, right? So that's I, J direction, zero, K direction, like this. So that's negative 3,200 in the K direction. That's foot pounds. 
And, and by zero, I mean zero i, zero j, zero k, right? So then if you gather up all the i components, which is right here, okay, let's do that. Negative six c right here, plus 3200. Okay, so let me just, so I can keep track. So I can grab these two. This is in the i direction equals right here zero in the i direction. Okay, j direction. Uh, oh, we don't have anything. Okay, so there's nothing in the j direction. k direction, this, 5c, this, 6d, this, minus 3200. This is in the k direction, equals, right here, zero, k. So in the i direction, we basically f sum the torque but only the x components, and that is right here, this equation right here. And then the one I wrote over here, this is summing the torque, but only the z components. Okay, so we have this one equation, okay, let me just go like this, okay, one two, three. Three equations, four, three unknowns, B and C and D. Let me point out the unknowns right here, 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 and here, right? So which one do you want to solve first? This one, right? Solve this one for C. Got it. 3,200 over six. Plug it in right here. And then solve for D. So now we both we know both C and D. Take those numbers and put them right here. And then solve for B. Okay, so right now we know all three reactions. All three of these. So now what do we do next? Method of joints. So for joint A. Okay, let me make a copy of this picture. and then go where I have more space. Okay, so for joint A, what's happening? You draw the free body diagram at that joint. Okay, so here's joint A, and then there's some, right? So I'm drawing all of them in tension. So this is between A and B, and then this is between A and C, and then this one is A and B. And let me not forget the 800 pound load. Okay, so that's the free body diagram of joint A. So now what do we do? Same, like some forces in X, some forces in Y, some forces in Z. They all gotta be zero, right? Because it's static. But why don't we break down each of these into components slowly? Okay, so let's start with A, B. AB is some unknown magnitude, right? We don't know the magnitude, but the direction, yes, right? The unit vector from A to B, we can get that, right? The unit vector from A to B is, right? Here's A and then B is zero, 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 right? So it's negative four I, negative, let me say it more slowly, zero minus four I, zero minus three j, zero minus four k. So that's not a unit vector yet, right? We have to divide by the magnitude. Okay, so now look, that's the vector right here. And it only has this one unknown. And then we do the same for AC. So it's an unknown magnitude, but the direction is the unit vector from A to C, which we can get, right? The unit vector from A to C is five minus four I, zero minus three J, six minus four K. And then that's not a unit vector yet, right? We have to divide by the magnitude. 
N. We'll do the same for AD. All right, so this is the vector is magnitude, which we don't know, and direction, which we don't know at this moment, but we can get it right now. All right, so the unit vector from A to D is six minus four, I, zero minus three, J, zero minus four, K, and then turn that into a unit vector. Okay, so look, we got all three of these and then the weight, I'll just, well, the, I'll just call this the load. Wait, we know that, right? The load is negative J direction. So we got all four vectors and we can write them in terms of components. So let me do that right now. Okay, so in the X direction, what do we got? T, A, B, and then right here, see? Negative four over whatever that, whatever that is. 16, 32, 41. Right, so this is the X component of this vector right here, plus the X component of this vector, which is right here. One over, what is this? Nine, 10, 14. One over root 14, T, A, C. Okay, now what's the X component of this vector? Negative four over, let's see, so that's uh, 16, 25, 29. T, A, D. And then what's the X component of that? Nothing. And here we go. And then do the same in the Y. So the Y component of this, negative three over root 41, T, A, B. The Y component of this, negative three over root 14, T, A, C. The Y component of this, negative three over root 29, T, A, D. The y component of this, minus 800, equals zero. Okay, and then one more equation, some forces in z. The, x, the z component of this, negative four over root 41, t, a, b. The z component of this, plus two over root 14, t, a, c. The z component of this, negative four, um, Let's see, where was I? Oh, here, the Z component of this. Did I write something wrong somewhere? I think the X component I wrote, I just noticed right here, that that's two. This should be two, right? Plus two. Okay, read this. The X component, sorry about that. The Z component is negative four. T, A, D. Okay, and then look right here. Three equations, three unknowns. So it's like messy algebra to solve three equations, three unknowns, but that's all that's left is that algebra. Okay, and then you have three equations, three unknowns, you know all three, and that's it. Okay, so it's got, this is kind of a tedious problem, right? So just give it a try and just make sure you know how to do the steps. The method is more important than the computations. For example, if you have a calculator that can solve matrices, uh, let me do that for you right now. Okay, so this you can write as a matrix equation like this. Um, okay, so let me finish writing this and then oh, let's see. 
Okay. All right, so this matrix times this vector. equals this vector. So take this and move it on that side of the equation. Then it looks like this. Because when you do a matrix equation, this times this plus this times this plus this times this equals this. And that's exactly this first equation. Right? And then that times that plus that times that plus that times that equals this, which is this equation. So you get it, right? This times this plus this times this plus this times this equals this, which is this equation. And then to solve this, like you just, you can let the calculator solve this matrix for you. Like if this matrix A, let's call it, and I'll call this vector X, and I'll call this vector B or something, right? Then matrix A times vector X equals vector B. How do you solve for x? x equals the inverse of a times b. So if your calculator can do that, or you can use whatever computer program to find the inverse of a matrix, that's totally okay with me. You can do that. Use your calculator, use the computer, fair game. You don't have to solve it by hand. I mean, you can totally solve three equations for three unknowns by hand because that's what we do in Math 103. Okay, so give this a try. Let me know if you have questions, and I'll see you in the next video.